What's going on? This is Abong Eka, one of the best CPAs you're ever going to meet in your life. And I'm also the best-selling author of Start Me Up the No Business Plan, Business Plan, which is an international bestseller as well. Not only published here in the U.S. and in Canada, but also uh, internationally in Indonesia and parts of Europe. So uh, I've been seeing a lot of this in the news. In this, in this particular video, I want to talk about whether or not uh, companies like Amazon and Netflix are paying their fair share and why this is happening because it sounds absolutely unequivocally ridiculous for that to happen and we're going to talk uh, and I'm not going to get I'm not going to get political I'm just going to explain how this works and why this is why this is happening because too often I see a lot of political pundits running their mouths about about the tax code and they have nothing they, they don't know nothing about it but that's not even the big issue the big issue is they're running their mouths about the tax code and they're using it in the form of identity politics to persuade others that it's a bad experience or something's wrong with it. And they're using it through the political cycle. And it could be dangerous for people who don't understand how this works. So I want to spend a few minutes and explain uh, how this works and why it's happening and, and then the, the effects of it. I'm not, again, I'm not talking about Reaganomics or any of that stuff or trickle down. A lot of people use buzzwords they don't understand, especially when it comes to economic policy. It drives me nuts. I'm sure people, if you are in your particular field and you hear somebody saying something about your field or what you do, your line of work, and they don't understand it, it probably drives you insane. I feel the same way from an economic policy perspective and from a tax perspective. So I want to share a little bit about that in this particular video. So real quick, uh, I live in the United States of America. I'm originally from Canada and my family is Nigerian. I'm also Nigerian as well, obviously, but I was born in Canada. I lived in Nigeria when I was a kid. But uh, in the two countries that I spend a majority of my time in, we it's generally... Uh, a capitalistic society or uh, economic uh, policies, capitalism. So in a, in a capitalistic or a, a country or an area that deals that has primarily capitalism as its economic engine, you are generally incentivized for taking risk. And the way I know this is because there are companies out there also known as banks and other institutions that provide loans to people if they want to start something, if they want to buy something for leverage, right? Because they don't have the money all themselves. If I want to buy this building that's behind me, that's $30 million, I can go borrow, you know, 75% of that money and then come up with the cash myself. But that's a risk I'm taking in the event everything goes to crap. Or if I start a business and I want to borrow money. Or if I'm starting the next Facebook or YouTube or Instagram or any other, anything you could think of, any type of company I want to start, even if it's, uh, forget it being an app, maybe it's a product or a service, I'm starting a company. Uh, from a capitalism perspective, it's either going to be cash that's coming out of my pocket, it's going to be loans from banks and other lending institutions and lending, lending sources, or it's going to be from investors, right? Angel investors, venture capital investors, friends and family. Uh, some people say friends and fools, but friends and family. And in order to start, in many cases, funds have to come from somewhere. You can, it's very difficult to start for free. Even if you started with $5,000, like sometimes, some people will say, I started my business for 100 bucks. You did, but you sort of didn't. There are other things that you did not add value to, i.e. your time. So even if you didn't come out with cash, you spent time doing something, right? And spending that time, there's value to it. Because if you weren't spending your time working on your business, you would have spent that time working in somebody else's business and making money. So there's still value there as well. Either way, there's value that's being put into, uh, into an endeavor or into an enterprise that you hope will do well later that will generate its own income. And the whole point of capitalism is that whatever entity you, you start or enterprise that you start will eventually lead to self-sufficiency because if you don't have that, it's literally, it's, it's, a, it's a charity, right? We have to go borrow money. There has to be a cycle. There has to be a revenue, sales, and economic cycle for a business. Now, let me explain the economic cycle, and then we're going to go into the tax piece as to why some companies like this aren't paying taxes, despite what people think is egregious. And I got people always saying it's egregious. And I'm not, it's insane. Okay, so the economic cycle is simple. You either come up with a product or you develop a service and you go to the marketplace and you sell that product or service to the marketplace. People you know give you money, and in exchange for that, you pay off the cost of either production or the cost of goods that were used to, to, in order to, to, to start the sale. And the difference between the sale price and the cost of goods sold and other expenses is your net profit or your net income, right? That's, that's re remaining. 
if you do not have a, a process or a cycle for that to happen, the likelihood of you staying in business very long goes to zero. Now, because the economic engine or the 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 uh, the the theory or the philosophy of, of capitalism encourages that type of risk. Uh, tax also, tax law or tax code also incentivizes that kind of behavior as well. So the tax code will most likely empower people or give people either breaks or deductions or whatever uh, for people who decide to take a risk. So the way you can deduct things. So here's an example, very simple example. If you are, if you have a business versus you being an employee, if you are an employee, in many cases, actually in all cases, you, you, you pay taxes first and whatever's left is what you get to spend. So if you notice in your W-2, before you even touch the money, you've already paid taxes. It's your FICA, your SUDA, your, um, all the other stuff that's in all your payroll taxes, basically, payroll taxes basically is your federal and state income tax, if applicable, because some people live in non-tax states, um, unemployment insurance or tax for that, um, your Medicare uh, tax, all those things are kind of taken out of your, uh, out of your paycheck. But if you have a business, you pay tax on whatever's left. So if you have income of, say, $100, right, for simple data, you have income for $100, your, your cost of goods sold, right, I'm selling a widget, that widget costs 20 bucks to make, therefore my, my gross profit is 100 minus 20 is $80. Now, I have to pay for rent, which is maybe 50 bucks, I got to pay for an employee, which is another 30 bucks, and remainder is zero, so I end up with zero dollars in income. Right, that's literally how it works. That's how uh, the tax system incentivizes people, incentivizes people when they start businesses to to deduct, uh, to pay taxes on whatever's left after they've they've paid for the expenses. Now, if you didn't do that, a lot of companies would go out of business, right? Because you have employees to pay for. So when everyone's screaming about what about the employees, the employees are paid from what is produced, right? Now, I'm not going to get into $15 an hour or anything like that. That's a, that's a separate conversation. I've actually seen that be a problem in some of the fast food places. If you've been to like Panera or you've been to some McDonald's, they've already started implementing kiosks because of the $15 an hour wage, um, wage requirement that uh, a lot of uh, state jurisdictions are pushing. Again, I'm not opposed to $15 an hour. I think in a capitalist society or in a place where capitalism uh, prevails, the very idea that I'm able to do this on my phone while I'm driving in a car that has electronics is based on capitalism because the market told the automakers what they want and what they're interested in. The market told uh, the phone makers and the app makers and everything else what they would be interested in and how they told the reason how, how I know they told them because they're buying their products and services. A lot of companies go out of business because they didn't do a good job of, te- of, of listening either to the consumer or letting the consumer know that what they have to offer is valuable and worth you know, spending money on. So uh, let's move back on to Amazon and GE and Netflix and all these other companies who aren't paying, who aren't technically paying tax. So one of the incentives in the tax code, if you're starting a business, is something called the net operating losses, right? It's a section of the tax code that allows for certain types of businesses to, um, to deduct losses they had in prior years. Now, why is that? So say, for example, this happens a lot with, especially in a dot-com, uh, before they went out of business. That's a separate code issue, but I'll just talk about NOLs, uh, net operating losses or NOLs for short. So say you're Amazon, which is what, is what happened with Amazon. Amazon raised a little bit of money, got started, raised some more money, went public in the public markets, right, which is another form of uh, infusing capital into their business. And their, their idea was, we're going to grow as fast as possible because then it dominates the market and then you can do what you want. That's the key. In many cases, people want to compete. But Amazon had no interest in competing. They wanted to dominate the market. Now, you can have a conversation about that and antitrust and all that stuff. That's a separate issue. Uh, but as it relates to NOLs and net operating losses, they ran losses, which basically means whatever income they brought in, right, whatever revenue they brought in, their expenses exceeded it year upon year upon year. And if you look at their publicly traded financial statements, I think they had about $100 million in net operating losses, give or take, about maybe more than that. I could be wrong. Last time I checked. Um, and that's public. You can go to edgar.gov, I think. Edgar.gov, you can find um, the financial statements of any publicly traded company. You can also find uh, that information on the websites of the publicly traded company, in many cases, in their investor relations section. Uh, this is stuff that I used to do years ago when I was some at the, when I was at some of the public accounting firms. 
Now, going back to, uh, to Amazon. So the if you didn't allow for companies to offset future income, right, with prior losses that were generated, a lot of companies may or may not start because it takes a lot of money in order to do certain things sometimes. One example, in case in point, you'll see this in the pharmaceutical industry. You know how much it costs to create a drug? Even aspirin, back when it first came out, it cost lots of money to, co- to create statins, to create um, any drug you can think of that's important, that cures, that cures diseases or helps mitigate diseases or mitigate symptoms, whatever it is. That costs hundreds of millions of dollars, if not billions of dollars, in trials, in testing, and in, in synthes- synthesizing uh, the chemicals in order. To, I've had a lot of pharmaceutical clients um, in my past, and so this is what you see this. So they generate a lot of losses as a result of making that, that actual, taking the actual risk to find cures. It's not enough to, so the government says, instead of us paying lots of money because we are efficient, they're inefficient, right? Governments are inefficient, go to the DMV, you'll see that. They're inefficient, so instead of us doing that, let the private sector take care of that, and then, if their reward in exchange for that effort is profit. So they do well. If they don't do well, they lose all their money. They have losses they carry, right? Um, if they do well, then they can get a, a wonder drug like, I don't know, Cipro or something, and it explodes on the marketplace and everybody has to buy it, or the HIV drug or whatever else. You can fill in the blank. But someone had to take a risk for that to happen. Same thing for Amazon. Jeff Bezos had to raise hundreds of millions of dollars, either in public markets through per, a private investment and some of it through revenue, in order to create Amazon as it is today. So as a result of those losses they ran for years in the past, you are allowed to carry them forward to offset future revenue, get to zero. So let me do give you a simple example as to how that works. So uh, your first year you start out, uh, your 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 loss is hundred dollars, right? So you have. Uh, Two hundred dollars. You have, uh, uh, say, three hundred dollars in revenue, and your your expenses because you put some money in yourself. You you lent the, the company some money. Three hundred dollars in revenue. You your expenses for the cost of goods for employees and rent and everything else ends up totally being four hundred dollars. So your first year in business, you have a loss of negative one hundred dollars. Loss of one hundred dollars, right? Negative one hundred dollars. Now some people say, "Well, you shouldn't be in business." That's not how it works. People who say that have never started a company. They don't work in business. They have no idea what they're talking about. Uh, you can just tell by the words people use. You can tell if they are if they if they're adhering their mouth to the teat of ideology or if they have experience in the business space. And many of them who talk like this don't have experience in business. They work for companies or they're in politics or they're just parroting you know, uh, talking points from whatever side of the political aisle that they sit. So the reality is this. Your first year in business, you have a loss of $100. The next year, you, everything takes off. You end up at Shark Tank. It's phenomenal. You end up with revenue of $1,000 and all your expenses are the same, $400 of expenses. Therefore, you have $600 in your, of, the, of this year. $600 is your income. You get that? But last year, you had a loss of $100. So you can carry the $100 loss forward and therefore, you're only gonna, your taxable income is going to be $500 and not $600 because of the loss that you ran last year. You get what I'm saying? In reality, you end up in the same place. It's not a loophole. It's not um, getting over on the government. It's, it's, it's in the tax code. Anybody who has a business, who qualifies, who meets it, and there are lots of companies, even the people who are parroting the fact that Amazon doesn't pay, they most likely have businesses that actually benefit from net operating losses. They're just talking literally out of their ass. So don't allow people to tell you things that they don't know the answer, don't, they don't know what really they're talking about. Now. I've had conversations with people on social where they're like, well, Amazon did $1.1 billion in revenue and they don't pay any tax. And you got to understand something. People do things like this, like the CNBCs or the Business Insiders or even you know um, NBC News. Or all. They, they write these articles as clickbait with, with, with incendiary titles, right? So people, get ex- people don't even read the article. Because they read the article, usually it's not as bad as the title suggests. They don't read anything. They get angry. And they start complaining about all this stuff, and they get and they end up talking to people like Elizabeth Warren, and she gets angry too. And I think they should pay more tax. I'm not interested in your socialism. The reality is this: they have no idea what they're talking about. And if they understood how NOLs worked, it would make sense. The fact that their profits are a certain amount is actually irrelevant because one, they're not taxed on that, and two, they haven't paid their employees yet. If you tax people on profits, what ends up happening is people start cutting expenses. 
right, to lower so they can end up with the same margin. Because you're trying to go after Amazon, what people don't realize is Amazon is in, I mean, millions of people's portfolios for their 401k, for their IRAs, right? They're part of the FANG stocks. If you invest in FANG stocks, Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, uh, Google, Alphabet, whatever it's called, and um, there's a few other ones I can't remember. If, if, if you invest in all these different, if you invest in different spiders and mutual funds uh, in a stock market, you most likely have pieces of Amazon or the companies that you're complaining about. Even GE is an example or Netflix is an example. So a lot of times people don't understand how this works. You have to get the simple principle of net operating losses. If you do, you'll understand this is not a loophole. This is literally course of business for people who start businesses because you are rewarded for, for, for taking a risk in the society because at the end of the day, people win if you do well. If, if you create a product or a service that actually does well and people want it in the marketplace, people will line up to buy your cupcakes, they'll line up to eat your chicken and waffles, they'll buy your cars, they'll come in and hire you as a lawyer, they will uh, hire you as an accountant, they'll do all these different things, they'll do all these different things to, to reward you with their wallet and their dollars if you bring value to them. If your house is the best on the block and people want to spend millions of dollars for it, they'll do that. If you're a good basketball or football team, they'll pay high prices. If you are a singer or an actor, they'll buy your swag and all your t-shirts and all that crap. They'll go to the, they'll go to the concert. They'll spend 150 bucks to go watch you sing songs that, that don't sound as good, that sound better on your CD. They do all of these things because they find value in them. They'll pay for cable to watch to watch your TV shows. They'll go to the movie theater and, and watch certain movies and, and spend you know hundreds of millions of dollars on on a new Jurassic Jurassic Park. All that happens because the marketplace finds value in it. If you don't do well, you either haven't communicated the value you bring to the marketplace, or your product has no differentiation. Basically, means you're no different than the guy next to you or the woman next to you. That's the difference. So. Uh, Amazon's one of the only games in town. They do extremely well. And as a result of that, they employ, I don't know, 100,000 people, a couple hundred thousand people as a result. These are all people who are getting paid. And then whatever's left gets, gets taxed. Oh, but wait, they have NOLs. Last point. If you're an employee, you are not incentivized or never rarely incentivized to take deductions in addition unless you can prove that you have a business enterprise. And those are the people who end up being audited because it's a half-assed attempt at starting a business, but all people are generally trying to do is to write things off so they can get deductions and lower their taxes. But here's the thing. If you are a W-2 uh, recipient, which basically means you're an employee, the government does not believe that you're doing anything to help the economy because you're not hiring anybody. You're barely spending any money anyways because majority of your income is being derived from your employ being employed as an employee. So that's the reason why they, they tend to fight people who are individuals who don't show, who haven't shown that they've taken a risk to start something. Now, I'm not saying everybody should be a business owner. That's not the point of this whole particular story or rant. However, if you want to start a business... You have to understand that there's a lot of tax incentives out there that can help mitigate your taxes that you pay, that can help encourage uh, investment, and it can also make you a lot more a lot more viable to last long term because you're not paying extra money in taxes to the government. Instead, you can use the, disc, uh, the deductions and the credits to help fund your business and grow your business. That's simply put. So if you have any questions, wherever you're seeing this, put a question below. Put a comment below. If you don't, if you don't agree with me, please cite why you don't agree with me. Don't just say I don't agree. Just say, uh, you know... Now, say whatever you want, but just, just put it below. Put a comment below. Uh, if you like what I said and understand and it makes sense and you need somebody else to understand this, do me a favor and put a comment. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. Uh, I really would appreciate it. And as always, I hope you guys take care.